pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And welcome. Mr. Belair, would you like to introduce our guest? Sure. Evening? Good evening, everyone. Uh, we're into the home stretch, probably the busiest time of the school year. We have uh, eight weeks to go. And I'd like to welcome everyone to the Board of Education meeting this evening. Welcome to Pat Theodore, representing our Administrators Union, as well as Linda Braley here tonight, representing the Federation of Classroom Teachers. And uh, we have a number of staff here tonight who are going to share uh, some progress with curriculum, and welcome to our administrative team as well. Thank you. At this time, are there any comments from our guests? Any comments from our guests? Okay, hearing none, we can move right along. And that takes us to our, uh, I think, our consent agenda. Yeah. No, to their, or excuse me, uh, we had an executive session earlier, and at this time, I would like to call for a motion with respect to non-renewal reduction in force of teachers. Uh, and Mr. Miller, would, would you please comment? If I could just give a little background yeah. information. Uh, tonight, the Board of Education met an executive session. Uh, uh, they're going to be making motions to reduce staffing. If you recall, during the budgetary process, we have a reduction of four elementary teaching positions due to enrollment. However, we do have one retirement at the elementary level, so that will require us to reduce our staffing by three at the elementary level. That also has an impact on the number of sections that are required for specials, so we'll also be reducing uh, a very small amount in the area of both um, uh, music and art. And also, by state statute, we also need to um, uh, non-renew and uh, reduce and enforce our long-term substitutes. So we're guided by a Connecticut State General Statute with this action, and I just want to remind everyone the reductions in force are not due to performance, it's due to budget. All right, thank you for that clarification, uh, Mr. Belair. So again, I will call for the motion first for the reduction in force of the teachers as explained by Mr. Belair. I'll make the motion that the Waterford Board of Education moves that the contract of employment of Adrienne Servideo, Kathleen Ward, and Michelle Hines not be renewed for the following year upon its expiration at the end of the 13-14 school year due to reduction in force and or lack of available positions and not due to performance. The superintendent of schools is directed to advise such persons in writing of this action. Thank you, Anne, for the motion. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Second by Kevin. There's no discussion. We'll move to a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That motion carries unanimously. We'll need a second motion again for the reduction in the time on the positions due to the, uh, the, the enrollment. Again, the reduction. So somebody would like to make the uh, second motion. Okay. That the Waterford Board of Education moves that the contract of employment of Mary Hendrickson and Celeste, no, I'm not sure how to say it, Elizabeth, be reduced in full-time FTE for the following year upon its expiration at the end of the 2013-14 school year due to budgetary circumstances and not due to performance. The superintendent of schools is directed to advise such persons in writing of this task. Thank you, Anne, for the motion. Is there a second to the motion? Second by Lisa. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That motion also carries unanimously. And the last motion that we will need is uh, due again to the, not due to performance, but to budgetary constraints. We will need the uh, motion, the third motion, with respect to the long-term substitutes. I move that the Waterford Board of Education, uh, well, the Waterford Board of Education moves that the contract of employment of Mark Doyle, David Irwin, Wesley Long, Karen Malota, Jackie Sullivan, Liz Sutman, 
not be renewed for the following year upon its expiration at the end of the 2013-14 school year due to reduction in force and or lack of available positions and not due to performance. The superintendent of schools is directed to advise such persons in writing of this action. Thank you, Greg. Is there a second to that motion? Correct. Second by Dave. There's no discussion. We'll move to a vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Again, that motion carries unanimously. And just to reiterate what the superintendent of schools said, the Board of Education, by such, it needs to take this action, and it is not just to reiterate due to performance. So thank you. Um, that takes us to now to the consent agenda. I'd like to ask if there's a motion to accept the minutes of March 20th special meeting, monthly expenditure report for March 2014, and food service report for February 2014. Moved by Jody, second by Dave. Is there any, are there any comments, corrections to the consent agenda? Questions? Okay, hearing none, we've moved to vote. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Anyone opposed? That motion carries unanimously. We come to our part about reading and correspondence. Mr. Belair? I have no correspondence at this time. Okay. Uh, we have plenty, I'm sure, from Kate, and we'll wait for Kevin's report a little later. Um, I will also be stacking back there with some of the materials from the last time with the high school. Uh, magazines that come out and the different materials for oh, it. I'll, I'll add to that. So we can move right to your report, Mr. Bellary. Yeah, I'd like to uh, call to everyone's attention the great student work uh, around the room on display. This is a work from uh, Quaker Hill. And I really want to take a minute or two just to comment on it because uh, there's quite a variety of work. Over here we have first grade work. This is students from Miss Lewis's class who were inspired by their study of warm colors. Uh, in cool colors in our class, they wrote poems. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness, goodbye to winter, and hello to spring. Their task was to describe the seasons while categorizing and comparing their ideas. Uh, the poems are great, um, and please uh, take some time to take a look. Over here is some writing on the wall by third graders in Mr. Macrino's class. They've been studying author's craft and figurative language through poetry, looking at Robert Frost as well as Walt Whitman, learning about text structure and rhyme patterns for third graders. There's some great work on display. Uh, Mrs. Cooper's fifth grade class, their work is on display over here. They have read biographies, historical figures, who not only play a vital role in the fight against slavery, but also who fought women's rights. Some great work on display, and please take a moment to take a look at the architecture with the houses here. Uh, some great problem solving, an interdisciplinary project with lots of math, lots of reading, lots of writing. So kudos to the Quaker Hill students for really displaying the work uh, around the room that really shows learning at its finest. So congratulations, Clark Lane. If I may, just for one moment, I would like to say on behalf of the Board of Education that this room has been brightened up greatly over the past few years by all the work from the uh, schools and our students and the Board of Education appreciates it and thank you for identifying everyone and appreciating them because it really does add to the environment where we appreciate what the students do. Thank you. Thank you. We have uh, two areas of our curriculum to update you on. If you recall, one of the goals that was set is to, uh, at the, you know, the conclusion of our first year of implementation of any new curriculum is to come back to the board and get a report on the implementation, the successes, some of the challenges that we're still wrestling with, and our next level of work related to those areas. So I'd like to turn uh, the presentations over to Mr. Powers. Thank you. And uh, uh, as Jerry said, basically, uh, this is a very important process, but after uh, a year in, how are we doing? And so I charge each group with uh, sharing uh, the implementation successes, and uh, knowing that curriculum is an ever-living uh, document, uh, how, after the first year, can we continue to enhance our craft? And so we, uh, each group has some uh, suggestions to continue uh, the, the fine work and enhancement, and also to share the professional development uh, that has supported uh, them in this uh, curriculum implementation. So first up is uh, music. And we have the vast majority of our music department uh, behind us. Uh, Gary Val 
Kelly will uh, lead it off and uh, introduce uh, everyone else. So she'll leave it around. Okay. Good evening and thank you. Uh, first, before I begin, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Blair and the College Board of Education uh, for allowing us to do this curriculum uh, last year and to uh, present the update. Uh, this power that is extremely important to go through this as a process, and as you see in my presentation tonight, uh, there's been some wonderful things uh, that the curriculum has allowed us to do. I'd also like to thank the um, administration at Parkland Middle School, Warford, and Asagashi, uh, Great Neck, and Quaker Hill for uh, supporting this new curriculum and the FDM. Um, you know, truly the curriculum leader, I'm also the director of band. At Clarkson Middle School in grades 6 through 8. Uh, at our elementary schools, we have Patty Backus who's with us tonight, Wayne Shadler, and Celeste Maluka. Um, our orchestral director is grades uh, 3 through 5 at all the elementary schools, and also she directs the great chorus in all three schools before Mazzarelli. Uh, Frank Marcaccini is the band director in grades uh, 4 and 5, and the choral director in grades 4 at all the elementary schools. Uh, Barbara Comstock King, who's with us tonight, is um, general music and choral grade 6, 7, and 8. Um, Joan Winters is the string and uh, orchestra director in grade 9 through uh, excuse me, 6 through 12. And at the high school, grade 9 through 12, Tim Figueroa is the choral instrumental and band and uh, general music teacher as well. We're going to start with our elementary uh, general music program. <coughs> the general music staff, um, and all of us actually, um, I felt that the new curriculum, including the Sunshine Act, yeah. is extremely beneficial and has provided a template for a smooth transition for new teaching staff, which Mrs. Maluka as a first year teacher can attend to. Uh, one of her comments the first month coming in award for, at our department meeting was how uh, easy the curriculum is to follow. So that was a wonderful thing. Uh, the PLC meetings that we've engaged in, both uh, K through 12 and K through 5, um, most of the meetings are based on the new curriculum and have promoted increased dialogue. Uh, concerning student learning strategies have been uh, reviewed and we check to see what works, what hasn't worked, what we approve, and where we're going forward. A uh, combination of factors have resulted in our decision to modify some of the grade level expectations in the new curriculum. These are minor changes, mainly in vernacular, and it can be done administratively. There isn't an overhaul of anything. Uh, some of the factors that went into our discussion um, that does take these changes is the introduction of a standard based report card at the elementary level. We're now grading individual students on their ability to read melodic and rhythmic patterns and to participate as an audience and their level of effort. Prior, uh, music grades were not standard based. That's a very important factor. Um, at our regional professional development workshop, uh, John uh, Fire Robin, who's the Director of Music Education uh, Division at the Park School um, gave us some insight, especially in our March uh, professional development, into the sequence of melodic instruction, which at our last meeting we figured, well, maybe, especially if we're in grade one, we're going to change what notes students audience on and begin to change those minor changes that we need to make to the patient guide and to the strategy. So that's really um, the essence of that. Uh, and the only other thing that Mr. Uh, Fire Robin uh, mentioned was perhaps to take some of the rhythmic patterns that we teach in grades four and five, and because of the uh, time factor, uh, bring them into middle, middle school, the middle level, rather than uh, cover them together. So they end up going to be a small teaching value and a small um, strategy. And another factor was uh, just the simple experience of living with the curriculum for one year. Um, our Elementary instrumental and choral directors uh, felt that the new music curriculum provides a much clearer reinforcement of lesson sequence and skills for students and provides for more on path learning. Again, the teaching guide uh, gives you direction per grade level um, of what um, specific content is to be taught for a trimester. The new curriculum is also uh, inclusive of uh, specific learning skills, and the students uh, need these skills uh, for a trimester in order to in the instrumental program. The new curriculum is easily referenced, as I mentioned, and provides students with development mentally appropriate content per trimester uh, in order to uh, enhance student learning. At this time, I'd also like to thank the Board of Education and Mr. Powers, Mr. Belair, 
and uh, for the purpose of not only the new technology of Horton High School, but the keyboard lab at Clark Middle School. And we also like to uh, thank the administration at Clark Middle School and at Horton High School for the support of the implementation of this technology. It has enhanced to learning great with just in the eight or nine months of its implementation. Here, this is a picture of the eighth grade chorus students uh, in Mrs. King's class using the keyboards for their theory work as part of the Chrome curriculum. This way, just uh, also, this is another picture, it's an advanced one. Uh, this one is also to credit J uh, Minus Department for actually constructing uh, these custom shells, which really uh, add uh, the perfect meaning for the technology support at the middle school level. Uh, so, it's sure. the size of the student. Nice. It does. It does. Um, and they might have a whole department from Clyde to all the electricians and, and everyone else who helped install it. Um, they deserve a great deal. The Keyboard Lab enriches the learning experience in uh, music classes, and, and actually all music classes, whether it's in the seventh grade chorus, the sixth grade chorus. Here is a picture of a student in one of the chorus classes going over some keyboard uh, assignments. This is extremely important uh, to kids learning, even in general music classes in grade six. The students have been able to work separately on a music theory website that we've been using, musictheory.net, um, at the keyboard lab, and it, it helps to incorporate 21st century learning so the students have to recite uh, some of their compositions and explain how their compositions were created and what, uh, and what methods they used to create uh, certain phrases. The student learning uh, has been enhanced as they progress individually um, in just using different assignments of the keyboard lab. The composition, which is the, the final project uh, in each trimester, has greatly been improved uh, since the addition of the keyboard lab. Some of the compositions are much more intense and much more involved. And it's really exciting to see the part of the students. You know, the pictures light up when you want to you actually see their work. Um, the course students have applied the cycling uh, exercises to keyboard under Mrs. Uh, King's instruction. And the lab also gives uh, the possibility of offering music technology classes beyond the sixth grade already. We're implementing in grade seven and eight, along with the German music class. Um, the new format of the curriculum is uh, very clear and easier to navigate for the ensemble directors at the middle level as well. Uh, the pacing guide, which has then been instructed in all three ensembles, very easy to follow for a trimester, as it is the elementary level. Uh, certain content skills per grade level per trimester are easily accessible. Um, it also aligns the national standards, uh, which is what everything is based on, in our curriculum in a clear and understandable manner so that we can uh, itemize what we have to teach in fact. Uh, the high school, uh, there's a music fundamental theory course, which is a preparatory course for all music majors. Um, this particular course, uh, the enrollment has doubled for next year as well, from what it is this year. So the, um, the student population, and I'll go over the numbers in just a minute, um, these courses that have implemented, whether it's music, month, culture, or all in ensemble, as well as music fundamentals course, uh, has increased the student involvement at Warburg High School in the music program by over 20 The music uh, reading um, that Tim and I both are doing at the uh, middle school and high school aligns perfectly with the district literacy goals. Uh, recently, um, Mrs. Moore came to observe a uh, connection lesson that I did uh, with a sixth grade band, and we connected uh, close reading with music type reading. And uh, she was amazed that the content that the students had um, that they were taught, very, very similar to close reading, the difference is, of course, we use music as our text. And with the concepts that I taught uh, through the post reading process, uh, the students sight read a piece for the first time, and she was amazed how well the students did at their first reading of the piece for 50 students. Uh, so it was, it's really neat to connect the students to that next. Uh, the music in modern culture, <coughs> uh, which is new, um, deals with a lot of uh, non performance nature, and it class, uh, reaches the wider population of more professionals. It gives the students a deeper understanding of today's popular music, and it lends itself to literacy strategies and assessment. This class also has increased in number uh, in next year, 2014 15, uh, to what it is this year. Um, as far as the ensembles are concerned, uh, the painting guide 
has been very helpful. Uh, the directors have felt that as well at Warford High. The emphasis on music checking has supported district initiatives, which Tim and I have been doing great things as well. The incorporation of technology for media board has enhanced student learning. As far as the Promethean board is concerned, the students have been able at Waterford High School to view different videos of choral and band ensemble, sometimes playing the music that they're currently working on, sometimes just playing uh, other pieces. It also helps to uh, explain and give examples of student movement and expression in music, examples of other groups performing the same literature, whether it be choral, orchestra, or band. Uh, it also has uh, enabled students to view interviews with different composers, which uh, are pieces that I'm currently working on. It also provides historical background uh, of the composers and the music currently being performed. <coughs> the uh, technology also helps provide the students with procedures and goals for the day as they're posted on the community board as they walk into the ensemble setting or the classroom. Uh, the Music Modern Cultures class, students have been able to view video clips of the artists performing. Uh, they use the board to represent research that they have done on various projects, uh, interviews with composers or artists or producers, and to provide historical background of the music uh, composers and the performance. Uh, the technology has brought all kinds of great music into the classroom via YouTube and other means, and uh, they also have been able to gain, through the use of technology, various orchestration and theory programs, which has enhanced their learning. Uh, specifically, there are 147 students that took music courses this year. Uh, as of last week, the number is up to at least 176, which is an increase of 29 more students that are involved in the music program at Waterford High School um, through the ensemble and through the industry courses. Professional development, we in Waterford um, are, have joined with 15 other communities across Southeast Connecticut, um, and we've uh, tailored our workshops to address each new educational initiative, whether it be the CPSS or C or whatever uh, might be uh, suggested by uh, the membership. The uh, professional development uh, workshops have been personalized to address areas that are content specific. For instance, the string teachers will be working on uh, certain workshops and certain pedagogy uh, that, that align to string instruction. Uh, the band people will be doing their thing, uh, three or four workshops in each day and the general music uh, people also get together with various general music uh, experts and uh, go over some, some different content material or related to the learning. Uh, it also allows us to work with music colleagues uh, to enhance instruction from all over the 16 schools. Extremely beneficial for all of us. Uh, I gave a workshop on the C um, back in October and on last year on the new evaluation system for people who are um, just going to begin the program. Uh, having time with our colleagues in our POC meeting here in the district has provided us with the opportunity to share strategies that enhance student learning. We go through the curriculum and we check out what things have worked, what things we need to work on, and where we go through. Anyone have any questions or comments? So, as you can see, uh, we have a new music curriculum, uh, a certain level of development, uh, clarity amongst our, 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 for our staff and uh, for our students. Uh, increased interest in small levels and uh, show high school. Thank you, Mr. Gosh. Jody? Are the class on? Are the class sizes still doable with the increase in students? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> five bands might be a little sketchy because we have 54 signed up for that next year, but we'll see what happens. I'm going to wait and see. So, but it should be fine. Thank you. Any other questions? I just have a couple of comments. Uh, one, relating to this update, thank the administration for doing this. I know the board has requested this in the past, and it's really uh, great for us to see where it's going. And particularly nice to hear the good comments. It's really rewarding for the board to see that uh, throughout this curriculum that you're really implementing the technology and the resources and that the students are really using them quite a bit and so this was one of the, the goals and, and you refer to it. Uh, I think if I may speak for the board, I think we're all happy to learn that it's easy to follow hearing the new teacher come in. I think that was also 
something the board was pleased to hear and then you touched upon because I remember when we first went back to the new board members looking at the, uh, adopting this new curriculum, there was an emphasis put on the interaction interdisciplinary with the new standards based, and it looks like that's being performed there too. So it looks like I, what I think I'm hearing tonight is that you believe this curriculum is really an improvement and that it seems to be working. Uh, working. Out. Are there? Any resources? Not that we can do anything this point, but are there any? <laughs> say, yeah, any please, thank you for <laughs> I know, I'm just curious as to because these, we brought in the uh, the lab, you know, and we did, and I'm just wondering to implement this really fully and properly, what, you know, maybe at some other point give some thought where where we will go in the future. I know that. Between our uh, IT department doing some of the wiring, mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned earlier, but if there's been extensive work from our maintenance department to really, uh, there are no uh, counters that really could have done justice. Right. And that the work great. that Clyde yeah. did, plus the work with the electrician right. and, and other uh, maintenance folks uh, was, uh, it was labor intensive. And, and they did a great really job. Right. This project. We said the board also thanks Jay Miner and his crew yeah. for all that good work. An opportunity to that tailors like that. All sixth grade students now experiment. Thank you. Do you have a question? I, I okay. think I do. Just okay. one quick one. I, I, with the technology you have now, <clears throat> in either the middle school or the high school, do you do like ear training where you actually play the music out and the kids have to write out the the music that they hear? At the middle level, we match pitch. Okay. And uh, we do some orchestration things at the high school. I, I will do that in my music fundamental class, some in the ensemble, um, as, as a part of, uh, of their ear training. Yeah, more intensive in the music fundamental class, the theater class. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but as far as using new technology for that, that's not really needed for that because, you know, we've been doing that for umpteen years on a regular acoustic piano. Um, so, but it needs to be able to have things like musictheory.net that we can put on the board so they can, we can watch them do their theory and critique them as they do it and, and think about their thought process um, in front of the class and after class rather than just on paper and pencil. So that's, that's an okay. Great. Uh, and also from the board, thank you to all the teachers that came out tonight. I know it's a busy time of the year, so we definitely appreciate, appreciate this good turnout. Thank you. thank you. Thank you very much. So we're going to shift and uh, talk about our school counseling curriculum. And Jason Adler is here tonight. <coughs> thank you, And uh, so while Jason doesn't have his whole department here with him, uh, we call them uh, they have to be here. The entire uh, school counseling department uh, did have input uh, in this presentation and the feedback tonight. And uh, again, Jason will emphasize the uh, strengths, and we're always reflecting upon our work and how we can make it better. And you'll see some areas that uh, we think we can grow uh, next year. Okay. It was a birthday gift uh, from everyone. My boy's birthday to beat my bath ego. So I appreciate you guys playing along. Um, so the school content curriculum update has similar to the music one. It is tape 12, as you know. And it's very exciting. In the uh, elementary ranks, it's run by our school psychologist. Um, and then 6 to 12 by the school counselor. So as we go through, the reason why there's a little bit of, of lightness in the elementary ranks is because the teachers have been doing it forever, and we're just codifying what the teachers have done, making more official and giving them more resources, as you'll see. And it was very time to see. Otherwise, we would have to do it Okay, so the elementary success stories from the accounting curriculum. Uh, that the school psychologist and I believe social workers helped out as well were brought in very early in the year uh, via faculty meetings. And through that, there was collaboration that occurred afterwards between the school psychologists and each of the classrooms to <coughs> codify what the teachers have already been doing, but then giving lessons that uh, the school social workers and school psychologists had developed on their own to enhance the lessons that were already on the subject, I should say, that were already being dealt with. And just a refresher, the major subjects in school counseling are 
social, emotional, academic, college career. Those are like our three pillars. And so hopefully not too high on the college end. I mean, these areas, but I do you know quite a bit of career uh, lessons are dealt with at elementary level. Uh, Paging my life with music it has been a huge benefit uh, to us, especially for us who hasn't had an official curriculum before, uh, to have a taping guide to verify the topics and when the topics are dealt with in each grade level from K to 12. Um, it's been beneficial not only at the grade level and the school level, but the schools that came afterwards. So we know what subjects have the kids dealt with, where are we building, where are we introducing new material. Uh, the teachers were given a checklist about to handle certain topics in the years. They were told when to reach out, how to reach out to the psychologists and social workers. Um, when things got uncomfortable or perhaps it was a, a learning moment. And uh, thanks to the Fordad administration, books and materials were purchased to further enrich curriculum and provide tools to teachers. I believe in multiple elementary but not all of them, there's now a section dedicated to this um, curriculum. So this is the primary slide for elementary counseling success stories, but I do have other knowledge for the question. Mark Lane counseling success stories. Thank you so much for the addition of counseling position. It has been an incredible boon uh, to working with kids and making the office more lively. Uh, more time in the classroom teaching lessons has been one of the major results of that. Um, additional positions, they've spent a huge amount of time in the classrooms in addition to their physical planning sessions. This has led to increased contact with students through those lessons, small groups and individual planning sessions. More collaboration with teachers has also resulted. This can be a theme throughout all levels, whether it be a school psychologist or a school counselor. Having an official curriculum gives stakeholders a better understanding of the school counselor's preventative role. That's a little bit of jargon, but basically, <coughs> of folks know that school counselors are those folks you can go to or the school psychologist when an emergency arises. Having a curriculum being able to share with parents and having it online indicates them what we're doing constantly in a preventative or enrichment role rather than just when uh, the emergencies arise. And that's a really important thing for the community to know. Pacing that again comes up extremely important in terms of increasing consistency of delivery regardless of the counselor, uh, but also between gr uh, grade and school level. Fairs, parent nights, and uh, student lessons strengthen connections between counselor, student, and family. I believe, Mr. Sack, that there is a coffee coming up. So we're very excited to hope the community gets happy. Uh, the Water High School counseling success stories. So formalized individual planning sessions on track. Interesting. On track to be held. That's my bad. To be held for all students by the end of the year. Uh, literally, we are seeing every student for a minimum of half an hour. Uh, usually, it's around an hour long session. Um, it is pretty impressive that we get to see each student. We have an itinerary that we get from every grade level, developmentally appropriate, talking about those three pillars. Uh, with our current um, time frame, we are addressing ninth grade transition issues through lessons and planning sessions during quarter one. Again, sort of honing in on the transition issues, as well as seniors we've always seen during that quarter. Greater student parent contact through lessons, meeting, technology, and human activities. Um, we've started Twitter accounts, sort of in homage to our new leader, um, and it's worked well. I mean, we have a lot of people who are who are looking at us. I've been trying to set up some things for stuff once I got permission, but really primarily it's updating our um, our webpage on the site of the Waterford High School, but also Twitter, um, and try and get the emails out through Navia. So those are our primary things, and it does reach a lot of people. Increased collaboration between counselors is a good a key uh, point for me as sort of the new leader of the department uh, to get that going. Uh, we're all wonderful in individual ways, but now because of this time frame being very lessons that we're out and about in the building, it's been increasingly important for us to work together as a unit, and that's been very successful. And like the middle school consistent delivery of curriculum, all students in the classes are getting the same information at the same time. So one parent hearing from another parent this what's going on, their child is receiving the same lesson with them now we can do that. Let's go. So ideas for next level work at Clark Lane Middle School. Investigate overlap in mentor program, counseling curriculum, health curriculum, administrative presentations, the safe future program for greater efficiency of implementation. So that potentially run on sentence basically means that lots of people are doing lots of good work in the middle school. The question is where is there overlap that you can see there maybe even needs to be enhanced more, or where is it that some of these areas are trying to handle in a way where we need to separate and divide duties so that we can cover even more ground. Um, I know financial literacy has been uh, brought up at uh, Board of Ed meetings, something that we really want to get going. This is what we're looking to see. Where can we 
free up our counselors to handle other subjects that perhaps haven't gotten the attention uh, that we all think they deserve. We have that time to do. Exam number blessings for grades <coughs> and academic, social, emotional, and career. Again, making sure that they all get the emphasis, not just one or the other. And high school, we just so much college stuff. But are we also getting the support we're not talking about? Like, so we're just pressing their uh, moments to shine. Uh, utilize mentor sessions with the counselors engage each group at least once during the year for small group planning sessions. This is something I've already talked about with Mr. Sachs. Uh, we are going to next year not have the counselors at the middle school have their own mentor group. Instead, they will rotate through working, co teaching with teachers, taking different mentor groups, working with them in small group sessions. But this will be with their year. That's how they divide them in the middle school so that they get more familiar with their kids, again, focusing. Uh, their attention on the needs of those students, and then hopefully that making the kids more proactive, more comfortable coming to them when times of need arise. Uh, further development of lessons, I've said hands-on learning, collaborative lesson science. We're really good people, but we're not teachers, and we need to look to our teacher friends and administrators to help us design lessons that perhaps could use a little bit of improvement from when we first did. All the subjects were great. We want to be more engaging. So that's the feedback we're getting from students. In fact, we want to learn about this stuff, make it more exciting, and the teachers have been doing this good work for years as administrators. We're going to learn from that, and that's one thing we need to do. Collaborate with departments that cover similar materials. Co teaching appropriate subjects in health classes and ensuring currently being planned. Um, one acronym that may be familiar with the guy, you guys, is SST, success plan. Um, at high school, it's been my personal goal this year to get that going starting next year. What that, this last bullet is what we're doing at the high school. And I think that when you're talking about classes that every student must take outside of the main um, core classes, PE, health, at high school there are a few more, we'll get into those in a few minutes, but those are areas where we need to work together uh, to make sure we're covering all the bases of that uh, student success plan without adding any more work. It's simply letting us, let everyone know the good work of teachers and counselors and students are already doing. Technical work at Walker High School. Greater utilization of World Wide Wednesday for delivery of appropriate topics. I just um, asked Mr. Hazard if I could write up one for uh, soon to come World Wide Wednesday about financial literacy. It is something that's been on my mind of late, and uh, we want to get to that student's mind as well. Co teaching SST lessons and appropriate subjects that all students must take, must take. So in addition to the health and key of middle school, we're looking to do civics, um, senior year English, um, U.S. history in junior year health class as well and key classes so that in present seminar as well. So that we can hit multiple times a year, not take so much time out of the core academic classes that we have in the past, but utilize classes that already are dealing healthy lifestyle, dealing with participation in government, and jump off of them rather than having a break in class and suddenly talk about colleges where they weren't doing so before. <laughs> Develop more efficient ways for guidance to secretary to assist in scheduling of an attendance at individual planning sessions. This one is going to happen at the high school level, we'll work it out together. Um, things get busy. We're all so, so very busy, but especially now we're like a doctor's office where you have to take numbers to see us. We want to make sure that uh, Laura is, um, Patterson, our secretary, is fully supported in knowing what she needs to prioritize. And that's one thing we will work on as a group. Assist the Board of Education in development of a graduation requirement that deals with SSP. Mr. Howard is more privy to this than myself, but he says this is something uh, that you guys are working on, and we would love have some teeth in the things that we do so that students know how important it is um, and connect it to what we do with co-teaching with other department uh, lessons. And considering the limitation of a regularly scheduled extended advisory block for guidance lesson delivery, again, advisory is such a great tool. We're looking to see if we can make it even better for some group presentations rather than taking kids out of academic classes. So try and work within the system that we have. Increase in professional development opportunities in special education laws and software. <laughs> something everyone needs, right? So we're looking to increase that, and we have to get an offer by Mr. Malone and Mr. Houser to do so in the next couple of weeks. And foster the use of Zaviance, the web, and email communication to address the non-emergency student needs. I really think this is an area of easy growth and one that we need to talk through on. Um, I'm working with the middle school counselors now to try to foster the use of Naviance in the middle school. Every student has an email. Uh, one of the technical is going to make sure that Naviance is looking at through as well. If we can train students to use their water for web address and know that they will think coming from teachers and counselors at a time they get to the high school, they'll be well versed in the fact they need to look at it. They need to communicate with us, and it's actually easier for us to deal with schedule changes either at home or at the end of the get early in the morning rather than 
in the heat of the moment during the school day when everything is happening. So global ideas for the next level of work, and this is basically elementary through high. Establishing annual career that shifts between Park Lane Middle School and Waterford High School. This year, that's because of a lot of things going on in the middle school, there was a breather taken to sort of recollect and say what was important, what was successful um, in past years, and we have been very hot at the high school to do something similar, but we're looking to learn from the middle school. So rather than, you know, staff drive or lead drive those who volunteer and come in, we're looking to say they do it every other year at each individual school, so that by the time each kid graduates, they're going to have three or four of them, which I think is fairly successful. Develop a personal science curriculum for delivery through the counseling curriculum. Um, we were made aware of a grant from someone who wanted uh, to give us some software, or instead going to take that grant, hopefully, and do something that will just help us with professional development. And I'm working on that with uh, Mr. Howley at high school. Create a collaboration with Waterford Youth Services for school district wide functions. Um, I'm going to be sending an invite, in fact, I should send to everyone here, but to the administration. Uh, because of a lot of loss by high school faith this year, we've been working extremely closely with Waterford Youth Services for both us as adults in the school, but also for the kids. Um, in May, May 15th, uh, there, I, I have the flyers right here. Oh, you do? Yes. Oh, uh, well, no, I'm not saying anything, Joe. No, no, that's the board. Board. There's a mental health fair that's happening at the high school. It's a new endeavor. We're hoping it's successful. Um, that will happen in the midst of all the AP tests to find out that idea. Um, and uh, we're hoping that it gives students out. They know that there's people out there, just not beyond their parents, beyond their peers, beyond that that is built in the building. They can reach out and talk to people, get something off their chest, seek help for themselves or friends. Okay. And the enhancement of activity events for, oh, I see what I was saying, um, for between 5th and 6th grade, 8th and ninth grade, and 12th and post-secondary transition. There's something for a larger footprint for counseling here at elementary and middle school. That's really what that means is that they don't need me there on a daily basis. I'm there. I'm at the middle school for a half day um, every week through the gracious uh, working out between the principals. But for transition-specific activities, I think I need to be taking a greater role to make it more of a point that transition is important. We know it's difficult and to make it as easy as possible for the kids and a good learning experience. Um, greater utilization of Naviance and school-based email. I already said that a little bit. And more communication with other departments for academic planning, lesson planning, and lesson design. The latter two I mentioned, talk to the experts to make our lessons better. But academic planning, uh, the school counselors at the middle and high school have been meeting with all the departments this year when they were making recommendations, giving them ideas of what had happened in the past students who they recommended to try and enhance the recommendation process. So beyond just team talking in the um, middle school, working together as a school, as a district, to try and make better recommendations and help kids learn. Professional development opportunities, uh, PLC and regional professional development for elementary school psychologists and social workers is being handled by special education, which is good to know. A greater emphasis has been placed on joint Parkway Middle School Waterford High School PLC work that's still in work in progress, um, but at least once a month we get together for a professional development opportunity. More professional development has occurred during PLC. Uh, meeting with RP Services, Safe Futures, today we met with the Army Staff Sergeant about opportunities and monies for college, etc. More joint PLC work with other departments regarding recommendations curriculum. We want to increase and enhance what we did this year. Regional Fellowship Professional Development has been intermittent for our, our, our curriculum, and that is primarily because it's like the Wild West when we're dealing with school college. We're one of the few districts to make the year great that has a curriculum that's approved by the Board of Education. So we come in ahead of the game the board of most schools, and so they're working towards where we already are. And so professional development has always been abused, has often, but not always been abused to us. Um, so in order to make it better for those of us who are a little bit ahead, we have joined the planning committee for next year to enhance the program so that we get back and just great. chat about it we're going to make a difference. And there should have been a question and answer thing. So <laughs> you guys have any questions? And again, uh, hopefully the takeaway is that uh, we're looking uh, as a department to be much reactive uh, or proactive. We're looking to lessen the administrative idea through efficiency, and we saw that as some of the next level of work. And we're looking to be uh, to provide more student contact, either personal or in the classroom. Uh, and again, I think we're looking to help with Jason's uh, presentation that this uh, is a great enhancement to our test uh, system program. Thank you, Mr. Powers. Are there any questions from the board? 
Well, again, I'll say we definitely appreciate appreciate the update, and particularly to see that you're setting higher goals and keep uh, assessing and coming in with new idea and the idea of the collaboration with the professional development with the other departments is uh, rewarding to see that happening. And I think when the board approved this curriculum last year, we were anxious to hear more about what work would be uh, going on between Clark Lane and the high school, and it looks like you've covered that very well, so we're pleased to hear about that. Excuse me, Joey, I didn't I said, No, I just have a comment. I'm glad that you're going into the classrooms more, mm -hmm. because I think it's important for the students to see you in different, you know, places rather than just in the guidance office. Yeah. 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 And, and look, the guidance office anymore, because we're going to the students. Yeah. And <laughs> more accessible probably to them, so I think that will make them more comfortable. I just have a question about the school. When, when do they get their courses for the next year? Um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to go this year. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> well, they um, selected courses in February, mm -hmm. and now we're building the schedule. We've got a, <coughs> uh, it's, it's not accurate to call it a first run of the schedule. It's really the fourth, fifth run, but it's the first run that um, we're, we're really comfortable working with right now. Um, and at some point in the spring, students will be getting a reminder, these are the things you registered for, um, and these are the things you've got, and anyone where there's a conflict, if we weren't able to fit something in for anyone, the counselors will work with them throughout the spring to <coughs> balance out the schedules, make sure they have what they need. Uh, the actual what class you have in which rooms or which class or with which teacher is typically made available in the summer. Will be before, will be before school starts? Yes, and they don't know what courses they have. They just won't know in which order. And oh, okay. So right. Well before school starts, but, but what, you, what Mr. Hauser outlined is that the students will know much more information uh, in May and June than they have in the past because of the scheduling uh, initiatives and uh, getting up the program of study to students uh, much earlier at both middle school uh, for eighth graders mm -hmm. and at the high school. Thank you. I'd also just add this comment. This is the third year in this process. Mm -hmm. This was a two-year building right. process, and this was the first year of implementation. So uh, it was really great to hear because so much of the work was done in this room. I would pop in from my office and, and listen in, and it, it's great to see and hear. Since we have you here, could I just ask you what's the worldwide oh, Wednesday? What, what is that about? I forget. Well, so uh, an advisory. Uh, uh, they come here one day a week, and uh, the branding I'm going to refer to either Jason uh, or Andre. Uh, we we revised our advisory program right. this year, and one of the things that was suggested by a member of the uh, revision committee was um, to to shift what had been a reading Thursday to something that was more interactive, something that really did meet those goals of connections, right. but still had. It's talking about thinking about um, larger issues. And so what we've been doing is selecting either a written text or a visual text. Very often it's a video clip, um, something from CNN or from YouTube, or you know, they're coming from all different uh, sources. And everybody in the school will, will view that same video or read that same article and then have discussions in the advisory on Wednesday. And some of them are, are really focused on sort of teen issues, bullying, mm -hmm. um, texting, safe driving, things like that. Some of them are focused on, we, we recently had one that was, it was about Crimea. We had one um, a, earlier in the year about Syria and the conflict there. And it's a way to really get students aware of the world and, and engaged in intellectual discussions that aren't limited to just one class. It's the whole school talking yeah. about it. And Jason had the, the great idea recently to start incorporating some of these topics that we do want to talk about um, through the guidance curriculum into the Worldwide Wednesday mix. Uh, because students are not, ne not necessarily sure what they'll get every week, but they know they'll get something of interest to talk about every week. Mm -hmm. Why not incorporate the things right. we want to talk about anyways? But thank you for the explanation. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And on an extremely side note, um, 
I want to thank the board and the higher administration and, and the building principal uh, for the computer lab addition at the high school because I have been graced with the presence of that fact in my life this year and it has made it incredibly easy um, to both balance the needs of the state testing mm -hmm. on the same time allowing education to occur using technology in the building. So I really appreciate it. In fact, that's just good to put further, the uh, you'll recall that um, we had to house our district IT staff uh, in the high school uh, while we were doing some renovations mm -hmm. to the maintenance and IT building. Uh, and um, it was been a uh, heavy project for uh, the, uh, the maintenance staff again and the IT staff to, to do the move and then uh, have that as a fourth computer lab at the high school. Great. So that has really uh, helped yeah. us and that will, uh, that was always in the plan and it was the final transition of, of the, the, the new high school and new maintenance and IT building. Thank you. Thank you. Sam. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Uh, we placed in your packet uh, really the highlights of our March 31st professional development. You heard a little bit about it tonight uh, from both the music staff and the school counseling staff. And you can see that we take professional development very seriously. There was professional development for our paraprofessionals as well as all of our staff. And most of the professional development was developed by the staff and presented by the staff. So I just really wanted to acknowledge the work of Mr. Powers and the Professional Development Committee and really our curriculum leaders and department heads and really planning a very worthwhile day. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, moving on to graduation, and I think it's safe to say I was really glad that uh, it was a vacation week when snow was in the air and we didn't have to do a delay or a cancellation, but I think it's safe to announce that uh, the high school will have graduation on June 18th. Weather permitting, we will be outdoors on the field, and that's at 7 p.m., and we'll get all of the details to you at a later date. The middle school will be at the high school auditorium, as it was a year ago, and that worked out beautifully, and that will be on the 17th at 6.30 p.m. Um, have we already communicated that with our parents now, or will we tomorrow? Yeah. We can. Yeah. So uh, we've had a few calls, and we said we'll bring it to the board this week, so uh, it's important for you to know. I would also say to you that this legislative uh, session in Hartford has been a very busy one around education. Uh, I wish I could tell you that many of the new mandates are fully funded, but they're not. And uh, we're in the process of unpacking them. And one that we're working through right now is that the State Board of Education has uh, approved the opportunity for local districts who have uh, preschools to charge tuition to their families on a uh, sliding scale based upon um, need and ability to pay. Um, uh, I can tell you that Nick Fisher, Eileen Cowley, the executive director over at um, uh, LEARN, Nick is the superintendent in New London as well as myself, uh, are not interested in charging tuition for the Friendship School. That's never been part <coughs> of the design. And we've always uh, budgeted for tuition within our budget. <coughs> Excuse me. Project LEARN also received some state grants to offset the cost. So we'll be having this conversation with the governing board, but uh, we are not interested, and we do have that flexibility. You know that this year and next we will have a credit based upon some additional state assistance, uh, but look forward in coming years that we will uh, put back that tuition expense within our budget. But we'll be having that conversation with the governing board, but I just wanted you to be aware of that. Uh, at our May Board of Ed meeting, we have a pretty busy night, and we probably have quite a few people in attendance. We have two administrative candidates that we'll be recommending for hiring. We have some student recognition at the end of the year, uh, as well as two curriculum areas with a number of staff. And I'd just like to suggest that that particular meeting be held over at the Waterford High School in the library. We did that a year ago. Uh, and we could accommodate really the, the size of the crowd. I think here it would be way too crowded. So I just wanted to get your sense if you'd like to uh, move the meeting and we can do some publicity around that. And I see everyone nodding in the affirmative. And <clears throat> certainly the meeting last year at the high school we enjoyed and the board has spoken about trying to occasionally go from school. Great. So that will be ideal. So we'll Thank do you. That. 
<coughs> also, just to let you know that uh, we're planning to close out the Great Neck, the Quaker Hill, the Oswakachi, and the Friendship School construction project <coughs> during either May or June, so we should be wrapping those up. The RTM reviews our budget on May 12th at 7 p.m. Uh, also, to give you a, a quick update on our two administrative searches, we had 27 candidates for the Quaker Hill principal position and 49 for the Waterford High School assistant principal. We're in the process of narrowing the field, scheduling interviews, and then bringing to you some candidates on Thursday, May 15th at 7 p.m. here in this room. Um, and that will be an opportunity for the board to interview uh, recommended candidates. And uh, our finance committee met just before the board meeting tonight, and both Bob and I shared where we are at this point in time, and we're very close. Um, uh, we basically have what we would call a freeze in place just to deal with necessary and emergency expenditures. Uh, we're very tight. We have a couple of areas that I've shared along the way that are over. Our special education costs are up. We have more students who have special education needs attending magnet schools. Uh, than we're budgeted for. And again, it's kind of a Carnac Act. We make the decision in October, but we increased uh, significantly in the numbers. Uh, we also had tuition costs increased at the Waterford Country School. We also had service costs increased by any of our students attending the New London Magnet School. Uh, snow removal this year and ice removal and snow and salt and sand, you name it. We're a good 30000 over in the overtime account. So our goal has been to be sure that we have 250000 in balance to return to the town because we've received that credit from Project Learn to Friendship School. And so uh, it's going to be tight, but uh, that's our target and that's our goal. Uh, we've already encumbered the funds for graduation and any important need between now and the end. But I just wanted the board to be aware of that. Okay. I, if I may, um, the Finance Committee met just prior to this meeting and we recognize the administration for taking this very proactive approach to be sure that we have the uh, funding necessary to return and so we're very grateful that uh, this is being done and every single account is being scrupulously looked at and we appreciate that so thank you. And lastly also at the <coughs> May meeting we'll be bringing for your approval because in the uh, new policy regarding international trips we bring it forward. The board takes action. We're looking at planning a trip to China in, the, uh, in April of uh, 2015. So we'll be bringing that to your uh, attention at the next board meeting. Wonderful. That's all I have for this very brief report. Thank you. We appreciate it. That takes us to our other committee and report from the board. I know, Jody, you have something prepared? Yes, we do. Okay. First one, I'll take you back on what Jason was saying, um, just so you know. The Water Producers Bureau is um, sponsoring a, a program called the Mind Matters, and it's about mental health and wellness, and it's a fair for teens, and it's going to be held at Waterford High School on May 15th. Um, and what each student is going to pass out to you. Each student is supposed to visit five weeks, and have the uh, vendor sign already there, and they also have to participate in a 15-minute um, presentation by a life coach. And uh, they go to all of these. They're also going to have uh, something called, because it's prom time, they're going to have, it's called the joint part, <coughs> and this is, um, get the, the, um, the notice comes to the kids that they shouldn't drink and drive. Um, because uh, during prom season, sometimes a lot of bad things happen. And they're going to have a raffle um, if they go to all the booths. Um, it's going to be a stress relief basket for them. And uh, hopefully that will help. But I think this is a great start in helping the high school students mm -hmm. um, learn about different things. As Jason said, they had a tough year, not only for the students, but the teachers also. So I hope this works out. Um, so there's no time on here. Do you know what time? Oh, it's a nice collaboration. Yeah, it is. Really and I'm happy the Youth Service Bureau is working um, so close to the high school. I'm happy the high school allows them to do that. I think you'll be a good team working together and only helping students. <coughs> also, um, the Youth Service Bureau is really busy getting ready for Camp Dash, the summer program. Um, this year, they're going to have a full-time nurse's aide there. 
uh, 38 staff members and 25 volunteers, and the volunteers can get learning through service hours. And that helps save um, a lot of money and also helps the students with their um, learning through service hours. Uh, the hiring process is almost uh, completed. They did interviews during April vacation. And what they're going to have this year is called a learning lab. And there's a form for um, parents to bring to the, the child's teacher if they are attending the camp. And they can fill out the different uh, course areas that the students might need help in. And uh, they can go to the learning lab for one hour a day for the five days that they're there. So this will help them stay on top of their uh, subjects. And when they go back to school, um, hopefully they won't forget a lot of things and it'll help them you know, hopefully do better in the next school year. And this year, uh, rather than Dancing with the Stars, um, the new is going to have a, uh, uh, an activity called Get Your Girl On, and all the proceeds are going to go uh, for mental health at the youth Service Bureau for their counseling. It's going to be held in July, on July 26th, at Philomena's at 3 p.m. And the flyers at the Service Bureau will be testing. I'm handing the flyers out, but um, I don't know if you want to make copies of this. Sure. Uh, I think that's it for you, sir. Um, we also had a school building committee meeting, and these are the highlights of uh, what, what um, the monthly schedule report that we have. Uh, Jerry, I gave you the great news that in the there is um, we're not over budget. There's eight hundred seventy-seven thousand four hundred eighty-nine dollars and sixty cents on the, on the unutilized authorization. And I just wanted right now thank. Um, Jerry for staying on top of everything, and then Jay for all the good work that he's done in um, making sure that everything is done correctly and explaining to uh, school building committee members why certain things need, need to be done a certain way. Um, and I'm really, happy. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really happy about the budget, and Jerry and Rudy worked really hard on that and uh, with the bonding. So could you want to explain a little bit about it? Um, well, we're in a good position because of the timing of things, and so um, uh, you know, no one uh, celebrates an economic downturn. But here in Waterford, with the construction projects, the cost of the bonds uh, was cheap, mm -hmm. and so it really um, uh, was very helpful with uh, taking the advice of bond council uh, to do the bonding and the timing when it did occur, and we saved significantly on the cost which has actually freed up some additional funds to finish up the project the appropriate way. Uh, we're looking at irrigating the fields, and that was something that we, that's just one example that we put on hold to make sure that we had enough funding. So uh, we're very pleased with what we're able to do to complete this project and complete it well. Mm. Good news. Thank you. Um, then also, just so you know, Gus uh, let us know that of the 50 items that are on their punch list, um, they were able to tackle 20 of them and it's been done over April vacation. So uh, we're getting to the end of the, of the project. Mm -hmm. I think the high school gets phenomenal. I'm very proud of it. We had so many uh, compliments during the basketball games mm -hmm. and the, uh, mm -hmm. the cheerleading mm -hmm. competition. And uh, hopefully our, bo our boys' baseball team is great too. And they have a new box and new lights. And, um, you know, so it's, it's, real, it's really nice. The complex is really nice to be proud of. Thank you. Is that it, Jody? Thank you for those reports. Um, other board member reports? Jeff, did you want to speak to us today? Sure, I have, coming I have a few things here. Um, as Jerry alluded to, uh, it was a busy legislative session, and there is a wrap up um, workshop on Tuesday, May 13th, at the uh, Legislative Office Building, Room 2A, from 9 to 11. Um, and it will go with the impact that uh, the laws and court decisions will have on what we do uh, in the future. Uh, May 16th is the deadline for any talented <coughs> group performances for the uh, CAPE convention, which is uh, November 15th and 16th, uh, uh, excuse me, 14th and 15th. Um, groups will play on uh, Friday morning and Saturday morning for about 10 minutes. Um, if we have anyone that's interested, you have to send, I get a kick out of this, they say, uh, a, a CD, DVD, or your VHS, uh, if you want. I uh, pass along that information to our folks. Yeah. Not a VHS. No VHS. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> then a couple of workshops. <laughs> We're already on YouTube. <laughs> a couple of workshops coming up. A collective bargaining uh, workshop on June 3rd from 12 a.m. to noon time. Uh, up in Weathersfield. Um, and the Summer Leadership Conference uh, on Tuesday, July 22nd. So you have more time to talk about that or remind you again later. And that's 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Sigur Point M. Great. Thank you, Ted. Any other reports? Just let the full board know that the policy committee did meet last week. You'll be getting several new more policies at the next uh, board meeting for first reading. We'll have several tonight. Mr. Baylor gave the finance committee report. And just to remind the board, and Jerry may want to uh, chime in on this one, the teacher negotiation contract is coming up. So the board, we should be thinking about, the board should give some thought. We'll need yep. to form a committee of the board's education for those negotiations. So just keep that in mind. And they begin and in the summer. They will. So we can talk about that again. Um, so that will take us right to our new business, which is the uh, VNA contract. Yeah. Do you have in your you packet want? a copy of the contract, and I'd ask um, Bob Chapensky, uh, who worked with VNA on this contract, just to give you the highlights. Thank you, sir. Um, the contract that we have in place uh, for approval is under the exact same terms and conditions of the existing contract. It would be a one-year contract and rating But are there any major changes? I went through it. I didn't take out last. There's nothing. Staffing levels are all the same. And I appreciate it was uh, nice to see the school hours in the past. How, how many hours are the nursing homes? Just one question. Just to, what is this? Uh, the, the terminology is this something they use on number 13 under duties, completion of annual school enterers. They use the word enterers with it. To be immunization, survey page three. Does it mean new students? Is it new students coming into the uh, school? What I assumed it was. It's just a funny way to say. Yes. Yes. So it's new students. So uh, uh, we, um, we have to make sure new students have the proper immunization. Right. In order to right. It was. I wasn't really questioning the English. I just wanted to make sure it was the language of the enterers. Yeah. Like that. Okay. It's something they have used before. Okay. Thank you. So this is something we approve annually we from July, and I will sign it if the board gives me permission to do enter into this contract. I'll need a motion. I will make the motion that the Water Board of Education approves the agreement between the Water Board of Ed and the Visiting Nurses Association of Southeastern Connecticut for July 1st, 2014 through July 30th, 2015. Thank you, Kevin. Is there a second? Second, second by Jody. Any other comments or discussion, Greg? I know that we have 2% budget. Where did that number come from? We sit out here and we don't see the cost of living going up 2%. We see talk about deflation concerns. Why 2%? So uh, the DNA um, in their own uh, collective bargaining with the nurses um, really, um, that's where the, the driver is. So how were we able to predict that? Uh, we're aware of uh, kind of their labor negotiations and, and they ended on 
there are there's, there's contract and uh, that's, that's really the genesis of that future attempt because as, as Bob already uh, explained there is there aren't any extra overheads. Um, so it's really so we're that. stuck with what they negotiated with their we team. are. Mm -hmm. we, we are and uh, I know uh, Jerry really uh, asked um, our former uh, Phil Russell, former business manager to do an analysis to see is this uh, the best deal for us? Um, can we do it any cheaper? And after um, an extensive uh, search, uh, that this really is the best, the best deal for us, and like uh, us being beholden to someone else's negotiation. Thank you for your question, Greg. Um, other questions, Jody? I just have a mm -hmm. question. We have because we have more specialists, some of them require more medical attention, right? So we would have to. Um, we have enough staff to mm -hmm. cover all that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, all schools are staffed with a school nurse. Uh, the schools that have uh, larger needs uh, are supplemented with uh, a nurse practitioner. And um, as Jerry alluded to, uh, you know, we check our staffing annually, but uh, it looks like we're staffed correctly, and, um, and that's just there in the contract. Is it working out okay with the nurses' office at the high school being so far away from the special ed classroom? I'm going to defer to the high school principal on that. I was concerned about that. When, um, there, at the beginning of the year, there were a couple of minor adjustments that we needed to figure out some timing on things. And once we have those, those figured out, it's, it's been a lot. Okay. That's good to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Another question from Greg. Just to Jerry, is this yeah. an area that you might be looking at in the future to keep in-house? Well, that was actually what we attempted to do a year ago, you know, because we've been outsourcing. Um, and still doing the analysis uh, at the end of the day, it was cheaper to stay here. And we really put a lot of energy into this. But this was one of the targets that we looked at and it, it wasn't to our benefit to assume the responsibility, but we looked at it very, very thoroughly. Are there many other, are there many vendors that provide this service? No. This is the back here. So Yeah. Yes. Oh, well, can you wait till we, could we have a motion on the floor? We have a motion and a uh, first and a second on the floor to approve the VNA contract for the period of July 1st, 2014 through June 30th, 2015. And if there are no other questions or comments, we can move to a vote. Okay, and hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That motion carries you in. your comments. And I thank you for sharing that with us. <coughs> that will take us right to our new business, which includes the second reading of four policy items. And the first one is on the pool safety plan, Correct. which, right, Mr. Powers, if you'd like to comment. And so, uh, you know, we went into the, the reasons of uh, the regulation and uh, through the uh, deliberation at the last board meeting, uh, we tried to uh, crisply amend the policy uh, that presented uh, before you. Thank you. This is tonight, just for the board's information, this is the second reading of this, and just I'm sure you remember from the last, this is also driven by state. 
statute now, so we need to have this policy in place. New legislation. I think the new legislation, the uh, comment, if I may just go back, and I, uh, I know Greg made a, a comment about let's be sure that our policies are actually worded properly with their policies, and that, that doesn't preclude us from having a sentence saying it's the rationale of the board, whatever we recognize, and then you come into your policy statement. Um, but uh, on this revision, are there any comments from the board? Everyone okay with this? Uh, if there are no other comments, we can move to a vote to uh, accept the new motion. policy. I do, mm -hmm. Anne, please. Okay. So uh, um, I'd like to make a motion that the Board for Board of Education approves policy number 1329, Pool Safety Plan, as presented and amended. Thank you very Second. much, Anne. Second by Kevin. Any other comments? Hearing none, we can go to a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Right. Anyone opposed? That motion and policy approved. Thank you. That takes us to our second one, otherwise lawful possession of firearms on school property. And, um, as to uh, the line board, there were some uh, minor uh, edits on uh, the second page of the beginning over mm -hmm. the fourth section of the I did uh, mention, and Mr. Powers and I had, after the uh, the policy committee looked at this and deleted some of the use of allowing firearms on school property, and it's now the, going to be the new policy that the board does not allow, except in the case of a peace officer. So if the board would agree, I think it wouldn't hurt to put in front, before we go right into the definitions, See what I'm saying? On uh, when you pick up this policy, you see it comes right to otherwise lawful possession of firearms on school property. And if we could just clarify what the policy is going to state next, just and and put that wording in there, it would be. Would you have any that I, well, just that it's the, the board of education prohibits the possession of firearms on school property, except in the law, except. Uh, in the case of a lawful possession of a firearm by a police officer, and then you could go into the definitions, and if we moved in the back, just move the sequence of it, the prohibition, prohibition of deadly weapons and firearms, one, and then after you mention the peace officer, put two, the peace officer, and then the consequences. It just flows in my, if that's all right with the board. It, it doesn't change anything. It just moves it around a tiny bit the sequence and it tells what the policy because otherwise you pick it up and you start reading about the weapons right away. That's just a suggestion if the board approves of it. I think this is an important, very important uh, policy that we have and I think it's a good change to it that we've made. It makes more sense. I mean what we did with the other pieces. Okay. This is also a second reading tonight I no, we can move forward with it tonight. We're not changing anything. Right. Okay. I'll make the motion that the Warford oh. Board of Education approves policy 1700, otherwise lawful possession of firearms on school property as presented and amended, with, and also with the changes that Kathleen noted. Thank you, Ann. Is there a second? Second by Lisa. Need more discussion, comments about this policy? Okay, hearing none, the board can move to a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? That motion carries as well. The next, Mr. Powers, on the board uh, created in 2011 um, has been uh, amended, and there were no changes uh, from the first reading. Uh, mm -hmm. So, um, I didn't have any questions. This is the second reading tonight, and again, just if I may take this opportunity uh, to thank uh, Mr. Hauser for keeping us on track here with our use of uh, social media and to uh, recognize that he attends the policy committee meetings with us, so we appreciate that. Um, I don't have any comments or any change on this piece. Are there any comments from the board? This, uh, this 
policy 4118.236. Someone would like to make the motion to accept this new policy? I'd like to make sure. a motion that the Board of Education puts policy number 4188.236 and 4218.236 social media as presented and amended. Thank you, Jody. Is there a second? Second. Who said David? Dave. Second is that? Any comments? Just a clarification. Okay. Did you say 4118 or did you say 4188? 